Coming to America, the 2021 movie, the sequel to the original 80s Coming to America, is on Amazon Prime, and I did get to watch this film a couple of days ago, and I wanted to do my review and my thoughts on Coming to, the number two, America. A movie that nobody ever asked for a sequel to the original. The original is one of those 80s comedies that is just kind of iconic and a generational comedy. And doing a sequel to that is usually a bad idea because you're either going to have the same jokes retreaded over again or you're going to have new jokes for, for younger people that don't really fit with the old stuff or you're going to have the characters doing something that either isn't characteristic or isn't uh, logical or it's not progressing the story. And this movie had pretty much all three of those. But it didn't have it as much as I was worried about. I went into this movie with low expectations. And it wound up not being as bad as I thought. It's actually pretty decent and worth your watch. And I'm going to go into... Well, it's kind of worth your watch. It depends on what you're into. But we're going to talk about that here in this review. So Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall reprised their roles from the original film. And actually, surprisingly enough, James Earl Jones is also back in what could be one of his last roles. I mean, I don't want to say anything bad, but the man is an elderly gentleman. He's up there in age, but I'm glad he had to come back and do this. And the film takes place literally now, like 30 or so years after the original film. Prince Hakeem has been married to Lisa, whom he fell in love with and married in the first film, and they have three daughters. And he's about to take control of the kingdom and become the king, but he finds out that in order for him to become the king, the next in line has to be a male. And he finds this out from a neighboring kingdom ruled by... Uh, <laughs> ruled by Wesley Snipes, who is pretty funny in this movie. And Wesley Snipes is awesome in any in everything, right? But anyways, no matter what you say about him, he's awesome in everything. And this ends up leading to quite the conundrum because the future king has to be a male and Akeem only has daughters. But lo and behold, how lucky he is because he finds out that he actually does have a son. And we get a flashback to the first film, which this movie had a few of those. And we find out thanks to that de-aging technology again, that Eddie Murphy's character, Akeem, did indeed have a, uh, a one-night stand with the, well, with somebody in Brooklyn. Uh, her name is Mary, played by Leslie Jones, and they do have a son uh, named Lavelle Johnson, who is played by Jermaine Fowler. And the movie is kind of more so about him than just Akeem, because, of course, Akeem goes to America once again to bring his son to his kingdom, to Zamunda, and he has to learn how to become the king. But of course there's problems because the sisters obviously don't really want him involved and there's this whole, I guess you can call it fish out of water story where they're bringing New York to Africa, the poor life to the rich life, and you have these kind of jokes that are in a way predictable, but they, it depends on your sense of humor. It's jokes that we've seen a hundred times in the past is it just me or is Leslie Jones kind of typecasted in the film a little bit too much with these kinds of roles and in other movies? And it becomes a situation where Prince Akeem is set to marry the neighboring kingdom's daughter, but he falls in love with someone else and calamity ensues. Really, the film is best seen without really knowing what's going to happen because honestly, although the storyline is a bit predictable, I predicted the end of this film um, pretty much like halfway through or maybe like a quarter of the way through, it is one that is interesting. Like the storyline of the movie is pretty interesting. I'm not going to lie. And Lavelle, the character of Lavelle, like Jermaine Fowler has charisma, but he doesn't have Eddie Murphy's charisma from the 80s. And that's the thing about Eddie Murphy. In the 80s, Eddie Murphy was amazing. Eddie Murphy could do no wrong. But somewhere in the 2000s, Eddie Murphy's movies just kind of... You know, that Pluto Nash era came along, and his movies began to really suck shit. I'm just being honest with you. And they got really cringy. And this film, again, going into it, I was apprehensive. It's a sequel to a movie that came out 30 years ago, and that's never a good idea. But it actually wound up not being that bad of a movie. And there are at least four or five laugh-out-loud scenes. Now, you're probably wondering, only four or five in the whole movie? Yes, just being honest with you, for me... There was only about four or five times where I actually laughed out loud. There were a few chuckles here and there. But if I'm being honest, really the funniest scenes in this film were in the barbershop. I mean, just like in the previous film, that was a highlight. In this movie, the barbershop, and of course, Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall do reprise their roles from 
other characters in the past, and we'll leave it at that to avoid spoilers. But and that was a treat. Seeing the old characters come back was a treat. Um, but uh, the barbershop scenes were interesting and funny because, as expected, they kind of were laying out these uh, sort of jokes that you get with these sequels that take place years and years after the original about how the world has changed. For example, the um, fact that being a, a trans person is now obviously a much more accepted in culture than it was back in the day. That's made into a joke. And the fact that, you know, groping women inappropriately is much more sensitive now than it was back in the day. That's also made into a joke. But the way it was presented here, I think, was funny because... You know who's a scumbag and who's not, and Prince Hakeem is not a scumbag, so they did a good job with that, but they were pretty much the best jokes in the film were in the barbershop, if you ask me. The story is interesting, but man, one thing that I found pretty strange and surprising is that there are not one but two times in this film where there are obvious CGI animals. I'm not even kidding. There's a CGI elephant and a CGI lion that are actually, the lion's actually important to the plot, and... You could tell it's CGI, but it was really good CGI. Like, I'm not going to lie. You could tell it was CGI, but it was pretty well done, surprisingly enough. It was pretty well done. Now, maybe I'm wrong and it wasn't CGI, but it certainly looked CGI to me, but it was good CGI. The movie does have heart. The first film coming to America, the 80s one, I think its biggest and best aspect is that it's a comedy that has heart and a lot of heart. This movie also has heart, and the ending is satisfying. But along the way, I thought to myself, who's going to like this movie? Is it people who like comedy now or comedy from the past? And honestly, this movie is tailored for people who love the original because there's lots of throwbacks and references to things from the original. There's a lot of them, in fact. So if you know the original pretty well, you're going to get a lot of the jokes here, and that means that new fans might not understand what's going on with certain references and jokes. But... Also, the movie does not have... It's The whole movie's not that. Like The whole movie's not just constant throwbacks, but there's plenty of them in there. Interestingly enough, Arsenio Hall was good in this movie, but he has a lot less to do in this film. Like, a lot less to do. I mean, like, he, he has about... He's in the movie for about 30% of the film. Like, he's not even barely doing anything. Um, and I did enjoy Wesley Snipes' character. I did like where the story went. And to be honest with you, I enjoyed watching it, but... To me, it's a one and done. If you've got Amazon Prime and if you're a fan of the original, you might as well watch it. Honestly, you're not going to hate it, I don't think. Some people do hate this film. Um, honestly, it's not that bad. If you have Amazon Prime already and you want to watch a comedy with your lady or your boyfriend or whatever you have, and if you're a fan of the original, you might as well watch it because I assure you this is nowhere close to being Eddie Murphy's worst. Yo, Eddie Murphy's done terrible, terrible films. This movie's not terrible. I would say it's average, maybe a little bit, a slightly... I don't want to say it's slightly above average. It's an average film and it's worth watching just once if you like the original. But if you don't like the original, you should probably watch that one first, which is also on Amazon Prime, and then you might as well watch this one. And if you like the first one a lot, you'll probably be more inclined to watch this. It's about two hours long, an hour and... I forget, like an hour and something, like hour and 45 minutes, something like that. Um, but it, again, after you see it once, there's not really a need to see it multiple times, but if you're a fan of the original... Go for it. That's my review for Coming to America. What did you think? Let me know in the comments, and we'll talk soon.